up on the roof. This is the next day. Uh, the BHB has bonded very strong to the top of the roof. But what I'm going to do just to be safe and to weatherproof it a little bit is to use this. It's called a turnabond. It's four inch wide, so I'm just going to cut it. Um, so I originally thought it was going to be wider than that. Or I thought the brackets were going to be smaller than that. So what I'll just do is I'll do it this way, like that, and just to weatherproof and act as a double layer for safety, just in case the VHB would were to fail. Then afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and connect the cables to the adapters, which I already have set up here. Once I do that, the, the sun is going to make these wires live. So I'm going to have to be careful from that point on. Uh, when I hook it up to the charge controller. So that's really the where we're at right now. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the tape. And I'm not going to make it go too far over the edge here, but I'm going to use the full width in the middle here. So basically I'm going to put a piece down the middle and a piece down there. And then I think I'm going to do one in the middle to hold the cables in place. So that way if a, a, the panels, one of the panels were to let go, these cables are pretty strong. They probably would hold the panel at least from flying and hitting somebody. So again, like I said, this is really simple stuff. And I can't really give you a better angle because the roof is curved. So you're just going to have to kind of deal with it. I'm already getting gummy stuff on my solar panels. So let's see. Basically like that. So, I mean, it's still going to get wet. I don't really know if there's anything I can do. I mean, I, I really don't want to put silicone on the roof. People say never use silicone. Anyway, I got four, four strips. Four strips here for the outside. So I'm just basically just going to go ahead and plaster those down right now. That's the finalized product there. Just get some of the air bubbles out. But yeah, there we go. So I just do that on each side, and that is basically the weatherproofing for the VHB and the backup in case the VHB fails. This tape uh, will absolutely hold the panels down. So I'm just going to do this on the other other uh, other three brackets. I don't need to record at all, um, and then we'll get to the middle ones, and I record that. I'm going to try to apply these now. I am precariously at the very top of the ladder, so I'm going to try to do this quickly. And I can't really lean on the solar panels too much because they're hot as hell. I need to like kind of like fold this sort of to get it down in here. And that feels about right. And that looks good. Basically just waterproofing and doubling up the protection from the VHB. funny it's people come and pass look at me like I'm crazy because basically I'm out in the street right <laughs> but let me tell you this is gonna absolutely hold these panels down not so sure it's gonna keep the water out but it should keep the majority of it out so there we go so I just got to do this other side. Then I'm going to put a piece of tape down the middle for uh, the cables. So I just turn a bonded the power cables down in one spot to keep them from flapping. I pulled them tight. Okay, it's ready to take this baby live. We'll do it live! We'll do it live! Ooh, that might work. Put them just like that. Okay. And this is gonna make it live.
There we go. We're getting probably 18 volts or something to the wires right now. I need to be extra freaking careful. I think sticking these under the panels is going to be plenty good. They probably will not make a bunch of noise or anything when I'm driving. And if it does, I'll just have to strap them down a little bit better. If I can pull these down, eh, you know what? I'll find out. If they make noise, I'll just tape them down. Okay, next thing I'm going to do quickly is grab some Windex and get all my fingerprints and grease off the... You can see I got fingerprints and shit all over it now. So, all right, that's step two complete. Step three, wire up the Renogy Commander and the batteries. So we'll, we'll do that next. All right, as part of the last touches, I just taped up these cables with some more turn -a bond Keep them from flapping. Also, so they don't look as bad. I mean, yeah, it's not the prettiest job, but uh, you know, it should do. It's better than having the black cables just sitting out there, which, you know, with uh, twisting and turning and hot and cold, they probably would have wound up flapping around eventually. So I'm just trying to bypass that. The panels are clean. The wires are live, so now I have to do is uh, pull the van back up into the driveway and get busy on connecting that uh, solar controller. So let's go get busy. Okay, now hopefully the music's not going to be so loud that it's going to actually come through, but I just want to show quickly, um, these both these cables are black. They don't have any stripes or any markings on them. I simply am using a, a meter, and I have that. And then the other cables in my other hand here. And I'm just putting it in the center. And there we go. 20.4 volts. That's positive. So that I know I know this one's negative. The other one's positive. So I'm going to go ahead and mark them now with a piece of tape. So that I know which one to plug in. To which side. That's just a quick little trick because these solar cables, they're always black and they don't have any markings, so there's really no way unless you trace the wire, and I really didn't want to trace the wire. I figured this is just easier. Okay, here's where we are on the third and final step of installing the solar system. Yes, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and used to be Pluto. Um, I put the solar controller here, and the on and off switch is going to be right here. I just drilled the hole. I didn't have a, a bit smaller, so it's a little bit bigger than it needed to be. So what? Um, I got the cable for this cut for the positive cut and ran. It just needs to be uh, hooked up. I don't have it hooked up yet to the batteries, and I have the. I took this cover off to install this. This is a um, this is a temperature sensing cable. It's got a little temperature thing there, and I was basically going to put it on this battery because I didn't really want to have to run it over to these. I figured temperature's temperature, and uh, I figured, hey, while I was at it, since I desulfated this battery, I've been charging the crap out of it. Let's check the levels, and well, yes. <laughs> It uh, it definitely needs a little bit more water, not a lot, but I'm gonna I'm gonna top them off right now, so I got the gloves on. So I'm gonna go ahead and top off the battery. Get back to this. Uh, I have the live wires right here with the positive marked. So these are live. Uh, so I'm trying not to touch anything. <laughs> and. Once I get this hooked up to the battery, which is in the next 20, 15, 20 minutes the most, uh, I'll go ahead and hook up the, the power from the solar panels. And now I'm not going to run the MT50 controller today. It's already about 4.30. I am going to plug it in and mess with it just sitting here. But uh, tomorrow will be to, to tear this thing up again tear the wall out again <laughs> um, fortunately I didn't put the bathroom back together yet it's still it's still torn apart from before because I kind of knew this was coming but I'll need to take this panel off and then use my uh, trusty coat hanger 
to run the wires behind the wall and over to where I'm gonna have to drill the hole and mount the MT50 controller for this thing. So that's where we are. Uh, I just thought it would be interesting to show you that it's only been about a month since I topped off the battery, but the fact is, is that since I've been really charging it heavily to desulfate it at 14.4 volts, and now it's actually holding, it seems to be holding probably about 70 of its 80 amp hours. So it's actually in pretty good shape. That's why I decided to keep it. Uh, the, only, the only downside is you have to have the distilled water and you have to maintain it. You have to top these things off once in a while. So I wasn't surprised that it was about an inch low, but I figured I may as well go ahead and uh, top it off now while I have the cover off to install the temperature sensor. So that's it for now. I'll give you an update uh, once I'm ready to hook up the power. Alrighty, here we go. I got everything hooked up. I got the meter uh, in its temporary spot just to make sure everything's okay. Got everything wired up. Got the wires ran. I have the solar uh, wires actually going up the wall uh, and then up into the cabinet and then out through the air conditioner like I mentioned before. I put the main power back on so everything's fired up again as usual. I put the uh, I tied the battery or the charger from the solar controller into into here with all the other grounds and then the positive went to that bottom terminal uh, which is the output from this switch because the switch you know as you know one is the main battery bank of 200 amp hours and number two is the backup battery bank of 80 amp hours and this is the switch that turns the solar on and off basically all it does is disconnect the battery it does not disconnect the solar from the roof i wanted to do it this way because this requires power from the batteries to run so if i'm doing any kind of storage or where i'm parking and i don't want the solar i want this to be off not only to save power but to remind me that the solar is off that way i won't go for like a day like and totally forget that my solar was turned off so here we go. Let's go ahead and fire that baby up. See if I can get rid of the reflection here. Now it is a five, I think it's like five o'clock, 5.30. It's pretty late. Um, the sun is about 30 minutes, 45 minutes from setting. So I really don't expect to be getting any power. Plus the way I'm angled right now from the sun you can see the sun kind of popping through there. It's uh, definitely uh, not going to be providing much power right now. But the point is, is just to get it to test. So you can st still see that, uh, interestingly enough, there is still 3 amps going in. It, it is 3 amp charging right now. I don't see a happy face. I think that guy's supposed to be happy when there's plenty of power going in but uh, of course he's not going to be very happy because yeah so, yeah, so we're doing even though the sun is pretty much almost set still getting 37 watts that's not too bad for and that's a you know a little less than a quarter of, uh, it's probably about one-fifth or so of the total available if the sun was straight up in the sky. And uh, uh, I do have the back of the van jacked up right now, so it's making the angle even worse. So really, all, about half of one panel is, is probably getting the juice. So let's, uh, uh, I can show you the sun from here. Okay. That's where it's at. It's very low. It's, it's almost hitting that tree. So I really am kind of surprised I'm even getting any power let alone 36 watts which that's that's still enough to run my laptop and stuff as you see it's ticking down as the sun just creeps down it's going to get less and less but uh looks like the solar is a success now all i have to do is get a very long i have a very long network cable in the house that i'm going to use to run the meter all the way up front that's going to be 
that's going to be something that I do tomorrow. Because uh, it's getting dark. I'm tired. I spent that, you know, I spent the day up on the roof. I sweated out like about an hour, hour and a half up on the roof. Getting those, uh, getting the tape and everything done and getting the wires hooked up. I got all this wiring in here done today, all the switches and all that stuff taken care of. So, really, I think that's good enough for one day. Uh, I'll come in here tomorrow and run, uh, put the MT50 up on the wall right next to the um, the battery controller so that way they're both in the same place and uh, I can keep an eye on what's com what's coming in what's going out but that's what's really cool you know I could see right here I could see right here I'm getting 33 watts in right and I can come over here and say oh look nine watts are going out but that's only because i just put back the uh, laptop back in after it was unplugged for a while so i just unplugged the laptop i still have the fan running above and see i have a i have a net of 12 watts let's go ahead and turn the fan off and that should jump up another 15 20. So technically speaking, I'm doing a trickle charge on the system right now, which uh, that's pretty awesome. I'm uh, kind of curious. Yeah, the voltage is very low because the battery is, is run down to under 60% right now. And because I had to disconnect the power to put the... So disconnect the power to plug everything in... Um, I had re I completely kind of bummed out that I reset the whole meter. I've had that meter running for over two weeks now with the power on, right? So, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's actually the the solar panels are doing 17 watts or 17 volts. Let's see. I wonder what it's feeding the battery because it, it says 12.3 at 2.8. What's it sending to the battery voltage wise? It's not sending 17 volts. That's for damn sure. <laughs> you know, maybe it's maybe it's the because that just ticked up to 12.4. Maybe it's um, because the power's so low, it's not actually. It well, doesn't make any sense. It, the voltage going in here should be 13, 14, 15 volts, something like that. I'll have to have to mess with this and figure it out. Well. It looks like the battery's flashing on the camera, so uh, that's going to be it for today. So, until next time. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Ernie.